To work on your mountain bike, you only really need a couple of major tools. You need some cable cutters and you need a set of quality Allen keys. But there, as you can see, there's loads of other tools available to you, loads behind me. And more importantly, there are some specific tools that will make your life a lot easier. And here are 14 tools that you might want to add to your collection. Okay, so the first one, dead obvious, a proper multi-tool. Now I see people struggling without having a quality one all the time, and I always tell people, get one that's got a chain tool on it because it will come in handy sooner or later. But that said, I haven't used one with a chain tool on for, well, I haven't used a chain tool feature for a long time, actually. I've been pretty lucky. I've just tempted fate by, uh, by saying that, but uh, that is a solid option that's going to do most things for you. But there are loads of other options available. You can get ones that fit in the bottle cages of your bike. In fact, this one fits in the little ninja system that comes uh, on the bottle cage on my bike. Tiny little option, also has a chain tool on it. But you've got to bear in mind, the smaller the tool is, yes, it's more portable, but it can be more tricky to use. So take that into account. You can also get these teeny little ones. This is a Park Tool one, this is a Topeak one. Both feature 10 tools on them and they're all really usable despite the size of them. So it goes to show you can get away with a tiny little tool. But a favorite at the moment that I'm really liking is this one because it features tubeless repair tools on there. I've had tubeless bikes for probably when tubeless first came out when Mavic developed UST and Stan's developed the first no tube system. Um, I've been using tubeless ever since then. And I can't believe I haven't had a multi-tool with one of these on. So I think that is an absolutely brilliant feature to have and it'll definitely make your life easier at some point. Invest in a good multi-tool and it will treat you well. Okay, next up, a tubeless tire repair kit. Yep, so tubeless tires are obviously, you're not running an inner tube in there, you're running a sealant on the inside and they will take care of small punctures as you ride. However, from time to time, you will slash the casing and you'll need something like this. So you can force this into the hole and it basically leaves this little sticky rubber worm plugging the hole. It works great, but after over a time, they tend to force their way out again. But you can do a permanent fix by trimming them down and using loads of vulcanizing solution, which you typically find in a puncture repair kit. So get yourself some vulcanizing solution. And if it's a particularly bad cut, then you might want to consider a giant patch, basically. These are kind of like inner tube patches, but these are, I think, from tractor tires or something like that. Um, they're essentially exactly the same, but they're just much bigger. With a load of vulcanizing solution, you can patch this on the inside of the tire, making sure the air pressure is not going to force that tubeless plug out, and of course, making sure it retains the air pressure. So get yourself a bunch of things, some additional patches, tire boot, and some vulcanizing solution, and have a little tubeless repair kit sorted. Okay, next up, you might want to consider having some CO2 cartridges in your collection. Now, they come in two sizes. You get the bigger 25s or the smaller 16s. The bigger ones will inflate a 27 and inch tire, roughly 2.4 up to about 40 psi, and the smaller 16 gram will do it to about 25 psi. Either way, they're pretty useful things to have. Now, we're not suggesting you use these things at home, and you definitely shouldn't be using them on forks, shocks, or anything else. They're purely to get your tires inflated in a hurry when you need to get home. It could be in a race situation or it could be when you're just out in the middle of nowhere. Definitely keep a couple of these with the relevant inflator that works with your valves. And staying on the tubeless front here, you might notice I've got a 2B booster here. So this is essentially a mini compressor. Now you can get floor standing pumps that have these built in. You charge up a separate barrel and you can release all of that air at once to inflate your tubeless tire. It seats it in one. But you may already have a floor standing pump you don't want to buy a new one. In which case, you get one of these. And you literally inflate this and then you can release the air straight from this into the tire in the same method as you can with the floor standing pump. Except this thing, is portable, so you could take this with you on your travel. So it's actually quite a cool thing to have in your collection. Now, if you haven't inflated tubeless tires before, you'd be quite thankful for the fact that many tubeless tires these days seat very easily with regular pumps. However, anyone that's tried this, has got it wrong, will know that these things are worth their weight in gold. A valve core removal tool. Okay, so this is a valve this is the valve stem, and this is the valve core, which I'm just gonna remove with the tool the correct way up this time. And why would you want to remove this? Okay, so the valve core itself is actually very delicate. 
The top of it has a threaded section and this can be bent or snapped off very easily. If that happens, air will leak out of your valve. It's also possible for these things to come out as well. So certain pumps that screw on, it's, a, it's possible when you unscrew them to unscrew these and they fly off, so you lose them. And also you need access to the valve stem for making sure you can inflate and also replace the tire sealant that's on the inside. And it's a nightmare getting these out if you haven't got a valve court removal tool. So we do recommend getting the proper tools, they're a lot easier to use. However, a lot of the valves that you get these days have top caps, have a little tool built in if you look at that. Very handy and it's on the valve stem at all times. So definitely consider if you're upgrading your valves, look for ones that have got the little tool in there. Failing that, get yourself one of these. And whilst you're at it, every time you finish with the set of valves, remove the valve cores if you've got removable ones. Keep them as a spare part, they will definitely come in handy. A cassette scraping tool like this. Yeah, okay, so some of you are gonna be like, oh, I just use an old toothbrush. Yeah, well, you're wrong, because they don't work as well. Okay, so admittedly, recycling an old toothbrush is quite good and you can use them, but they're not as good as these. This has three different styles of bristle on here. Some are soft, some are very firm for getting that horrible black gunky stuff off your jockey or your guide wheels around the rear derailleur. But more importantly, it's got this little feature for getting stuff out between each sprocket on the cassette. It's a really useful tool. And that said, if you're gonna be investing in one of these, you're probably best off getting a set of brushes for washing your bike. There's loads of different options available, but the main ones you wanna consider are a big brush, which is kind of similar to a car brush, to be fair. Um, they're soft, so they're not damaging on your paintwork. The soft thing is good, but also it means you're not gonna be getting loads of mud off, so that's a generic brush, but a good one to have. You definitely want a small, finer detailing brush with very firm bristles, so this is quite aggressive. Good for using on your cassette, good for using on your chain rings, things like that, for really working out horrible, gritty mud. And then perhaps you want something like this, like a pronged brush. So these are great for getting on the insides of hubs, uh, around the back of fork arches, places like that, they're really tricky to get, especially if you've got a suspension bike. Yes, you can use household brushes and that, and you could use an old toothbrush, but really, just get yourself a set of brushes, they don't cost a lot, and they basically last forever, so job done. A grease gun. This is about as simplistic as it gets. It means you do not have to get your hands dirty when you're greasing things on your bike. You've got loads of control with the grease gun. Most grease guns that you buy will fit any sort of tubed grease that have the same sorts of threads on them. Once you've got one, it will always work. They're brilliant, it means you can literally apply a very specific amount of grease to a very specific place. As you know, if you've worked on bikes before, getting grease into things like threads on the bottom bracket shell or even into bearings and places like that can be very messy, and you can end up putting way too much in there. You can be very precise with this, which will save you money, because you don't use too, too much grease. Just get one, it sorts your life out. A third hand tool. Yep, that's right, it's just a bit of bent spoke. That's all it is. In fact, one spoke could make two of these, one for home and one for leaving in your riding bag. That day when you need to rejoin a chain or you break a chain, you'll be thankful for it, because when you're trying to slide around on the chain holding it in place, you can literally just use that to hold the chain and you can successfully join it. That's all it is. So simple and it will definitely make your life easier. A set of chain pliers is a very useful tool, but a very specific tool. Uh, not one that many of you will use constantly. If you're a mechanic, sure, you'll use these quite frequently and they're worth their money, but I've got a cheaper, better option for you. Now, there's a few different brands on the market. These ones are Topeak. They're so useful. So it doubles up as a set of tie levers. There's also storage on the back. You can actually put a chain link on here, a joining link or quick link, whatever brand you have. It's got a third hand tool built into it. Not quite as big as the one I just showed you, built up from a spoke, but it's part of this. And you link these together, like so, and it becomes a set of chain pliers for splitting a master link. Absolutely brilliant. And you can leave this in your riding bag. It will come in handy with one of the things that's on there. Just sort yourself out. It'll make your life easier. A chain wear tool. Do I even really need to tell you that replacing your chain before it's worn out will save you money? Some of you might not understand how it saves you money, so let me explain. Your chain effectively stretches over the time of its use but not as you might think, so that plates do not get any longer. What happens are, so there's four major components of a chain. Outer plates, inner plates, a pin that goes through the middle, and the roller. 
the inside of that roller bores out over time and the distance between those pins can just change slightly. You can get a bit of wobble going on. The pitch effectively changes on your chain because of that wobble. When that happens, the roller doesn't necessarily sit in the correct part on your rear cassette or on your chain ring teeth. And it's gonna wear them out prematurely. If you change your chain before it's stretched beyond a certain point, you're gonna be able to get two, maybe three chains out of the existing sprockets and chain ring on your bike. That's gonna save you money. Otherwise, if you don't, you'll end up replacing all three items every time. Just sort yourself out. They cost almost nothing and it will save you money. What's not to like? Tire pressure gauge. Now I'm betting there are loads of you watching right now that have never used one of these. And in fact, I'm betting there's also a lot of you that don't even know what tire pressures you're running or you've never really experimented with them. I'll tell you what, this is the way to guarantee free traction. Get yourself one of these and go out and play on a bit of trail and experiment with tire pressure. It will make your handling on your bike much better. You will get a better pressure for your bike. You'll probably end up going lower than you realized. You've probably got your tires a bit on the firm side and you'll be really surprised how much difference even two PSI can make. Once you look at a number on here and you figure out, oh, that feels good, start going down one PSI at a time or going up one PSI at a time and it can make all the difference in how your bike handles on different terrain. Get some good base settings, write them down and stick to them and check your tire pressure from time to time because tires do leak air. Sometimes they just leak air naturally, sometimes they leak air in cooler environments, sometimes you might have a slow puncture. Either way, get yourself a tire gauge. They will make riding bikes more enjoyable, I promise you. Get yourself a generic spoke key. So this is a multi one, this will do various sizes of spoke. Now even if you don't know how to build wheels or true wheels, you can still nip a spoke up tight. If you're in the middle of nowhere and a couple of your spokes have rattled loose, perhaps you've had a crash or hit a rock, things are gonna get pretty bad in the state of your wheels. They're gonna start unraveling themselves. So just being able to nip them up tight until you can get to a bike shop is a useful thing to be able to do. Just get one, they're pretty cheap. And like I say, they're gonna come in handy sooner or later. A few quid, put it in the workshop, job done. Flash cutters. Okay, so maybe this is not really an essential tool, but it's definitely a tool that makes things a bit nicer on your bike. So most mountain bikes will have a number of cable ties on them and you can cut them completely flush with these. Why would you want to do that? Well, for your OCD reasons, you probably want to do that, but also it doesn't look very nice. And more importantly, the edges of cable ties when you don't cut them can be incredibly sharp. Now I've seen loads of people slice their legs and stuff on exposed cable ties. So from a safety point of view, actually snipping them flush is a good thing. They're also very useful for um, doing your nails with as well. Uh, last up, a mini ratchet tool. So it's up to you how you want to get one of these. There's all sorts of different ones on the market. Uh, this one actually has some torque bits with it as well, so you can actually tighten some of your controls to torque settings. But the main feature about this I want to talk about is just how damned useful it is. So there's a number of places on your bike that you will find some Allen key bolts or, or Torx head bolts that are insanely hard to get to or very tricky to use. A good example would be bottle cage bolts. You can never get in there properly because your shock might be there or the frame design. With these, it's so easy just to tighten them up. And you'll wonder why, when you use one of these, you haven't used one sooner. Now, I absolutely love using these at GMBN Tech. You use it, one of the most frequent tools. And my other favorite place for using it is on disc rotor bolts. Disc rotor bolts, it's well known that if you slip, you're gonna skin your knuckles. You have to be extremely careful with those. With a ratchet tool, it's actually fairly easy to apply a good amount of pressure to it and get them done up nice and fast without slipping. It's a really useful tool. And like I say, your bike might have some obscure cable stops or something like that. If it does, chances are this is gonna be a tool for you. They're not very expensive and they're very, very useful. Okay, well there's 14 extremely useful tools for working on your bike. Um, I'd love to know what your favorite is. Mine, for reference, is a digital tire gauge. Honestly, I mess around with tire pressure for years and I'm quite finicky about it these days. And in case you're wondering, I'm running 23 on the front at the moment and 26 on the rear. It's a little bit soft out there, but uh, being able to fine tune is a really beneficial thing. Seriously, it's good fun as well, trying to work out your ultimate tire pressure. Uh, let us know what you think in those comments and we'll see you in the next video. See you later.